I give you all honor and all glory. Hallelujah. Thank you this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we are all, all, Lord God, here to hear your word. I thank you. Thank you, Lord God, that we are drawn to you, each and every one of us. We're drawn to you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your outpouring, Lord. Thank you for your outpouring. Thank you for the word that comes forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your blessing. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your provision this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For it's like finding the corn in the fish's mouth. I thank you, Lord God, for your provision. Hallelujah. That all need is met. That all need is met. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the flow of the Holy Spirit in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for the flow of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Good Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Good Sunday morning. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Jesus, in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that eyes are open in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this place. I'm Pastor Deborah Purcell, and this is Empowering Word Ministries. We're located at 7537 Old Alexandria Ferry Road in Clinton, Maryland. We're here every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Glory to God. We're here every Wednesday evening at 7 at the Hope of Judah Church. You can reach us by email at ewmword at gmail.com. This ministry is led by the all-powerful, speaking the word, unfiltered, unchained word of God, Pastor John Purcell. His will be the voice that you hear after mine. This morning I'm reading to you from the book of Matthew, chapter 21, beginning at verse 18. If you'll read along with me, I'll be reading from the New International Version this morning. Early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly, they asked. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Amen. Glory to God in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to God in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God in this place. Glory to God in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God in this place, hallelujah, hallelujah, some mornings you wake up 
and you just want to worship him you just say your majesty your majesty I worship you I worship you I come God to worship you I come to praise you Lord I come to give you honor God I woke up this morning with the sole purpose God of giving you praise God I woke up this morning God and my first thoughts are to worship you I woke up this morning God yearning to be in your presence hallelujah God glory hallelujah God glory I come in this place not for me God but to worship you 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 come on and worship him worship him worship him glory come on and worship him come on and worship him your majesty 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 I can't get past your majesty I worship you in the beauty of holiness I worship you your majesty I honor you God in the beauty of your holiness your majesty your majesty press through your situation and say your majesty press through your pain and say your majesty press through the tears this morning and say your majesty hallelujah don't worry about your neighbor just say your majesty I know you're living in an apartment and it's early and you're concerned about the sound but they need to hear these words your majesty your majesty your majesty I come God to worship in the beauty of your holiness your majesty regardless of what I think I have to say God the most important thing is your majesty your majesty your majesty your majesty your majesty your majesty come and worship God your majesty press your way to be into the beauty of God's holiness hallelujah at the 11th hour I promise you won't call on the name of Pastor Purcell when your money's looking tight you need an unending source of blessing your majesty when the doctor comes with the report of your blood pressure you need a word from the healer your majesty when they gather the family about your loved one and the news seems grim you don't need me you need your majesty income looking kind of strange you need a provider your majesty 
I come, God, this morning, pressing my way to be in the beauty of your holiness. Hallelujah. Give God a praise because he's worthy. Give God a praise because he's worthy. Whether you're here, whether you're online, whether you're sitting waiting for the mall to open, watching the broadcast, whether you're on your job and you're sneaking a peek to see what God has to say, clap your hands and praise him. He's not ashamed of you. Don't be ashamed of him. Come on. Glory. 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 God. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory in this place. I just came by to talk with you for a little bit this morning. Welcome. Glory. Hallelujah in this place. The co-pastor read a scripture for you this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. Hallelujah. God sent me to ask you a few questions this morning. The first is, are you willing? Are you willing? Denzel Washington was in a movie. And my favorite line from the movie is the only ways to find out is to find out. This morning we came to find out if you are willing. Hallelujah. The Lord our God loves you. And the Lord our God has given each one a talent, a vision, a purpose. So this morning we came to find out if you're willing. And that may not seem to have anything to do with the scripture that the pastor read this morning. But we're going to find out. And the only way to find out if it relates is to find out. Let's find out. Let's find out. Jesus said in verse 21, truly I tell you if you have faith and do not doubt not only can you do what was done to the fig tree but also you can say to this mountain go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done if you believe if you believe you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer so as we enter our topic this morning and on are you willing the first thing is are you willing to simply speak it are you willing to speak it? Are you willing to speak it for the fig tree didn't simply dry up by itself? Jesus spoke to it. And then he believed that it wouldn't bear, as my grandmama say, nay, another fig ever. But see, you say that you believe in God's word you say that you believe that there's a purpose for your life the Bible tells us that we shall know you by your fruit so the question is will you speak to the dead in your life see Jesus spoke to the fig tree because he was hungry and he walked up on the fig tree, which had a leaf, but bared no fruit. It deceived him. So he spoke a curse on his life. Death to the fig tree to try to trick me. The dead in your life is trying to deceive you. The dead in your life is trying to convince you that you cannot have all that God said you can have. The dead in your life is trying to convince you that you can ask for something in the name of Jesus and that you shall not receive it. And the debt is saying it is evidenced by your brokenness. The question is, will you let the debt remain in your life or will you speak death to the dead in your life? Will you 
Are you willing to speak to it? Are you merely cowering in the face of your adversary? For your debt is preventing you from getting to the place where you say you want to be. You say that you want to be prosperous. You say that you want overflow in your life so that you can truly give. Giving is when I give to you out of the goodness of my heart without thought to how it's going to impact the rest of my life. That's a cheerful giver. He just gave never with no thought. I gave because I love you. I'm giving because I love you. I'm giving because God told me to. No other thoughts, just giving. When you have a mountain of debt in your life, you do not give without thought. You can tell me anything, but when you got a mountain of debt in your life, you have thought before you tithe. You want to have a debate in your mind about gross versus net. What do I tithe on? What does the Bible say? You want to have a debate in your mind when God says, I need you to give brother so-and-so $50. You have a thought in your mind about whether that was truly God or not because of the mountain of debt in your life. And I simply came to ask you, are you willing to speak it? For in Jesus' final words, he said that you could say to this mountain that... That you could say to this mountain, go throw, not I'm going to throw, go throw yourself into the sea. Let, let me bring, that was a long time ago, that was 4,000. Let me bring you to 2013. When there's a mountain of debt in your life, you can say to the mountain of debt in your life, go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. If, wait a minute, there's that word. If you believe, if you believe that you can speak to the mountain of debt in your life, tell it to go throw itself in the sea, if you believe, it will be done. That sounds simple. Speak to it. Come on. I ain't got but three pages this morning. This is going to be quick. I'm staying out of God's way today. Now, you spoke to the mountain of dead in your life this morning at about 8.15. And you told it to go cast itself into the sea. You say the reason that you're doing it is so that you can be able to freely give without hesitation. I want to be able to bless the kingdom of God. I want to be able to truly give. I want to give on gross, not net. Cheerfully, with no thought. Will you stand, are you willing to stand on what you just said? Because what comes always comes next. When you begin to declare in the atmosphere who you say you are, your adversary is always going to ask you a question. How you going to do that, player? I promise you it's 815 on a Sunday morning. If you say to the dead, the mountain of debt in your life. Go throw yourself in the sea. Round about 9.05. Because that's what the law allows. One of your creditors is finna call to the house. Hey! Car payment overdue. Electric bill behind. You just told debt to go throw itself in the sea. And debt calls you and say, are you talking to me? Are you talking to me?
so that there's no confusion debt, let me be specific. Car note, house note, credit card bills, anything I'm behind on, anything that don't look like God that's trying to hinder me from where God would have me to go, financially I cast you into the sea. Throw yourself into the ocean. Come on. It takes faith. Because you got to believe. If that was what we did, then God wouldn't have sent me to ask the question Are you willing to stand? For at 8.15 this morning, you declared in the beauty of holiness, you shouting around the house, glory, the kids getting their Holy Ghost dance on. Hey, oh glory to God. Hey, mama, yo, we free. The enemy has to come. He has to come. We need to understand if you will stand on what you say. They shall know you by your fruit when you're afraid to answer the phone because your caller ID says it's a debt or bill. When you're scared to pick up the phone, it's simple. You don't believe. You don't believe. You simply don't believe. If you believe what you said and you had the courage and audacity to pick up the phone, what you might find out on this morning, as the creditor said, I know in the past, we've called you and called you and you haven't been able to pay this debt, but this morning we just released a new program just for you. We calling you to see if we could work some out. We calling to find out if there's a way they're calling to beg your pardon. They're calling to beg your pardon because you just cursed them. They ain't trying to throw themselves into the sea. So now they looking to compromise with you. As they tried to compromise with Jesus, son of David, what are you doing here before the appointed hour? Glory. You think you the first one that the enemy tried to compromise with? Jesus, we beg that you not cast us out, that you at least allow us to go into the pigs over there. You think you're the first one that spoke a curse on your adversary and then that enemy tried to compromise? You would be tricking yourself. Expect the call. Expect that the call is coming. They, they're not going to call you before 9 o'clock because the law will not allow them to. The creditors have to follow the rules. See, they're bound by the law. They're bound by the rules. Mm -hmm. The rules say that they can't call you before 9 a.m. So you're good at 815. The rules say, uh, verse 21, Speak to the mountain. Tell it to cast itself into the sea. And if you believe, that's the end of it. That's the other rule. The worldly law mandates them. The word of God is of a higher authority. Come on. Get in your Bible. We're going to learn something this morning. Go to Matthew chapter number 27. See, we want to find out if you're willing to stand 
Are you willing to stand on this morning? Go to Matthew chapter number 27. We want to find out if you're willing to stand. I want you to keep your attention focused round about verse number 11. I want you to stay focused this morning. I want you to, the first question was, are you willing to speak it? If you know anything about, see, listen, I hate to get to name calling, but if you know anything about a coward, he is afraid to speak. Once you have spoken a thing, once a thing has been said, ye who have courage need not try to justify what you just said. <laughs> the Bible tells me that I could speak to this mountain of debt and tell it to cast itself into the sea. That's it. End of story. Period. Exclamation point. As they say in the neighborhood, done deal. Right? Jesus had been declaring in his ministry as he walked and healed and opened blind eyes and raised people from the dead. He had been telling them who he was, right? Did you read that part yet? He had been telling them who he was, that his father sent him, that he came to set the captives free, that he came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. That's what he told them, right? He did that with all the surety, all courage. Now, the question is, will Jesus stand? See, the same questions that got asked of him are going to be asked of you. Because the Bible tells us that you're going to be persecuted for his name's sake. So, the questions that were asked of him are going to be asked of you. Jesus declared that he had been sent by his father not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And here in Matthew 27, he stands before Pilate being accused. And they accused him and said some things and it says that Jesus said, that's what you said. At nine o'clock this morning, the creditor calls and says, I'm finna come pick up your cup because you ain't made no payments and we about to come get it. Will you stand on what you spoke will you stand on what this word says or will you yield to your flesh because you just got delivered from the cussing spirit yesterday last night you just got set free from the she need a good cussing out demon the other day you was just Heal from, some people just take me there, spirit. Right? That was yesterday at deliverance service. It was this morning after you spoke the thing in the atmosphere and you and the kids was high shut up around the house. Right? It was a second ago. Here comes the enemy. Will you stand? Pilate, do Jesus, do you understand? Who they say you the king of Jews? What are you? The, what are you the king of Jews? It's what they ask him. He said, "That's what you said." Your adversary will try to get you now, realizing your power and authority, to speak something contrary to what God said you are. They ask him, "Are you the king of Jews?" And Jesus replied. That's what you said. Because he never called himself that. He said he is the king of kings. Not just the king of the Jews, but the king of kings. They said, well, maybe you're just the king of Jews. No, nope, that's what you said. 
For he is the king of kings. What the song say this morning? You are royalty. You are king of kings. So now they try to call him out their name. Listen. So when your creditor calls at 9 o'clock, if you get the right one, the creditor will talk to you. Listen, because I've had a few in my day say, listen, so you just a deadbeat. Is that what's going on? I mean, because I if I'm just dealing with a deadbeat, you know, let me know right now, and then I'll know how to deal with you. Y'all have had that creditor call your house if you had a debt with a slam attitude like it's his money. I've had a creditor to be talking to him, and in the middle of me telling them, explain, they say, shut your mouth. I see you just a deadbeat who doesn't honor their word. They are now trying to tell me who I am. And my reply to the one who called me a deadbeat was, that's what you said. Oh, we, we standing on what now? Not what I think. Not what my flesh really, because down in here some cussing words. Not what my flesh really want to say to him, but I'm standing on not my own understanding, but in a crisis, I'm going to lean on what God said. That's what you said. Because that's not what God said. God said that anything that I asked for in the name of Jesus, that I could have it if I simply believe. That I shall receive it if I simply believe. And matter of fact, as my recollection goes, I just spoke to you and told you to cast yourself into the sea. So I'm trying to figure out why you're still talking. How could you still be talking to me? Oh, you like the fig tree. You're trying to deceive me. Uh. So now, here come the accusers. This part is important when you're trying to stand. Here come the accusers. Not your adversaries that you can clearly see. Here they come. Church folk. <laughs> Church folk, here they come. What in the world? You've been saved for 35 seconds. I've been walking in this thing yet 35 years. What in the world makes you believe that you have the power and authority to speak to a mountain of debt in your life and it'll go into the sea without you first coming up to the deacon's board, without you first doing a prayer request, while you wait until prayer day on Thursday for the pastor to come and as big as that mountain of debt you have, you need to wait till Saturday till the bishop come. What in the world makes you think that you have the power and authority to speak the things that you say? They said to Jesus, who you think you are? They accused him of all manner of things. He was guilty of which one? None of them. When I'm speaking to my creditor, can I stand on the word? Yes, because which thing am I guilty of? None of them. That was John. He talking to Pastor Purcell. Glory to God. He's speaking to the new creature. Hmm. Now, here's where the standing part get hard. Right about now, you was good with the creditor, but you got excited this morning. You got a word at 815. Glory to God. You shouted. You excited this morning. And you didn't get the 9 o'clock call from your creditor that I said you was going to get. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm, you feeling good. You live in Mississippi watching a broadcast. You live in Virginia Beach watching a broadcast. You live in Florida, North Carolina watching a broadcast. So you get excited. Let me get up as the pastor has told me time before and go to my local church. Hallelujah. And fellowship with the people. And you excited. Holy, holy, holy you praise. Glory to God. You got to shout when you coming in the door. You got to praise. You elevating the praise in this temple. Oh, glory to God. Why are you so excited this morning? Brother Robinson, why are you so excited? Oh, God spoke a word into my life. And here they come. What in the world make you think that God is talking individually to you? 
What makes you think that you have the power and authority to hear from God? You ain't been in church in six or seven months. And here they come, accusing. They, uh, what's the movie called? They know what you did last night. You shouting, glory, here come the church folks. Oh, sinner, sinner, sinner. God hears no prayers from the sinner except the sinner's prayer. God ain't it up. Calm that down. And then they would begin to list the reasons why. This probably happened in your, ain't happened in y'all church, but then when I was there, they begin to list the reasons why you couldn't possibly be hearing from God yet, baby. They list the reasons why we shall call you a brother of music. You not ready to be called minister of music. Not yet. You ain't been here. You need at least 10 or 15 years underneath your belt before we can call you a minister of music in training. Hallelujah. And then when you get about another decade or two, then you come before the board. If you play enough of these traditional songs the way we want you to play them, glory to God. If you stay inside the box, glory to God, then Maybe, and maybe, maybe, maybe the deacon boy will allow you to be called minister of music. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Go pray on that. That thing, get caught right here. Your Holy Ghost dance stopped. Yup, they caught you mere shout. Oh, this is the part where we're not honest. This is the part where the hair stood up on the back of your neck. This is the part, if I could take your blood pressure reading, you about to explode. This is the part where you're 30 seconds from doing this in the church. Out of here. And they came. Sadducees, Pharisees, who's them? Church folk. To accuse Jesus. See, the real test of standing is can you stand on God's word? And as the creditor told me, shut your mouth. Can you be quiet? Sometimes the test of standing is your willingness to stand on God's word your willingness to fight if instructed by God but the greater test for us is are you willing to stand on the word understanding that this battle is not mine it's the Lord's God called him king of kings God called you righteous God said that if you believe on his son that you're saved God said that if you believe God said in his word that if you believe that you can speak to the mountain and tell it to cast itself into the sea and it shall be done God said that you have the ability to heal that you have the ability to raise the dead God's word said what in the world is it that you need to say what you need to say God bless you the kingdom of the Lord is at hand God bless you deacon the kingdom of the Lord is at hand God bless you sister the kingdom of the Lord is at hand when we get right holy that's what we want to say don't let your flesh deceive you that's called passive aggression because you said it with tone with I know God told me not to say nothing but if I just say something it says that Jesus said nothing but Jesus made no reply not even to a single charge
when I know that I know. See, some stuff you got to get from the old saints. That I know. When I know that the sky is blue, you can quote whoever you want to telling me that it's green. When my eyes are closed and you're trying to tell me that the sky is green. When I know the sky is blue. If sickness afflicted me and I physically was unable to see, I still know that the sky is blue. It may get dark for a little while, but that the natural state of the sky is that it's blue. I don't have to argue with you about it. I don't have to try to convince you of anything. The sky is simply blue. Jesus knew that he was the king of kings. So what they called him was irrelevant. Jesus knew that he committed no offense. So what they accused him of was irrelevant. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. When your creditor calls you a deadbeat and says to you that you just, you know, you're just a deadbeat. What you know to be true is that you want to, to be able to pay the debt. But whether it be through poor management or job situation or health or whatever, you aren't able to. So whatever accusation they make, what you simply know is the truth. Hmm. So are you willing to stand on the truth when adversity comes? When accusation comes? What in the world makes you think that you're going to have your own recording label? What in the world make you? Who told you that? Who told you you was going to have a center and help women to get healed? Who told you that? When you know that there's a thing that God put on your heart, all the man or woman of God can do is through the word confirm what you in your heart of hearts already know. What God has already spoken to you about your life. As we enter into the beauty of his holiness in this word. The confirmation that you've been seeking will come out. Do you need to defend what everything in you is telling you is your purpose? Why would you? Because you've tried to defend it before. You've tried to argue with people and get them to understand about your purpose. How'd that work out? I'm telling you, if you practice real good for about 20, 15, 20 years, if you practice real good, and if you go to these courses and these places, then maybe. So you're trying to convince them was a waste of time. As Jesus stood, what they're saying is irrelevant. Next, we, we almost finished. Are you willing to stay the course? Uh oh. Because you started out 815 glory. Mm hmm. You stood on the word that God gave you, glory. They accused you and you didn't say a thing, standing on the word. But are you willing to stay the course is the question. 
in the middle of the course, you will have a moment of doubt. I promise. In the middle of staying the course, when nothing seems to be going right, when everything seems to be going wrong, where there seems a better way, an easier way, when there seems to be, maybe you should just turn around because this thing ain't worth it. It ain't worth all this. That moment's going to come. But will you stand on the word at that moment and will you continue the course? If you drop down the verse about 27. Uh, what is stand in the course? Let me see. Uh, then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. What did it say he said? Nothing. He stayed the course beaten, spat on, you got doubters and haters in your life, people trying to tell you it would be easier if you would just turn around, why don't you give up, why don't you quit, why don't you just be what we called you, deadbeat, loser, why don't you stop now? Will you stay the course? Will you stay the course? Are you willing to stay the course? See, these are not things that I can give you the answer to. The only person that can answer is you. How do I know that in here somewhere, you're going to have a moment of doubt? How do I know that you, man of God, you, woman of God, me, in there, are going to have a moment of doubt. For when you go down further, the Bible says that Jesus cried out, Father, why have thou forsaken me? What does that sound like? A moment of doubt in the midst of what you're going through in the midst of staying the course you will have moments of doubt because that wasn't his first moment he had another moment early on father but thou take this cup from me nevertheless thou will be done the enemy, once you get saved, tries to convince you somehow that when you're not perfect, you're not saved. That when you have moments of doubt, somehow you've lost your salvation. Somehow you've backslidden because you had a moment of doubt. You went from being saved a moment ago the enemy would convince you to head it straight to hell because you had a moment of doubt. Understand that in the middle of your press, understand that in the middle of staying the course, there will come a moment of doubt. The question is, what you going to do? In the midst of my tears, when it seems like my vision has gone astray, when it seems like 
the resources that I need are not there. When it seems like those that are supposed to help me have chosen different directions, I have to stand on what God said. And in spite of how I'm feeling, in spite of what's in my mind, my steps forward say to God, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe for your faith without works is dead. This thing is dead if I sit down. This thing is dead if I turn around. My demonstration to God about my faith is I keep coming. Keep moving. Keep standing. When you keep on coming. When you keep on moving. When you keep on working. In spite of what's going on around you. In spite of what it looks like. In spite of what they said. In spite of what they tried to do to you. The evidence that Christ believed. Is that he stayed. On the cross. For he had all power in his hands. He could have done anything that he wanted to do. He could have struck them all dead where they stood. But he had to fulfill the word. He had to fulfill it by staying the course. The way that you bring God's vision to pass is by staying in the vision. Moving forward. Keep on pressing. Keep on going. Keep on speaking. Keep on standing. It's evidence by what you do. 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 That's how we find out if you're willing. Are you really willing? Or you just say you're willing? You just want to talk about being willing? Are you willing as long as adversity don't come? Are you willing as long as no storms crop up? Are you willing as long as everybody else is going along with what you say? Are you willing when you can see it? Are you willing when the sheets add up in your bank account? Or are you willing to stay this course no matter what comes? Because the Bible tells us that you're destined to do great things. You are destined to do great things. You were created to praise God. I don't feel like singing. You were created to praise God. I ain't really feeling that song. But you were created to praise it. I ain't got a real good singing voice. You were created to praise it. She always on the wrong key. I'm going to just let her go. You were created to praise it. You were created to do great things. Jesus, open blind eyes. That's the word say. Jesus raised from the dead. That's what the words say.
Jesus put ears back in place, healed all throughout his ministry. Yet he said that greater things than these shall you do in his name. John 14, verse 12. Verily, truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Greater, 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 greater. Let me help you as you begin to speak. As you begin to speak, Understand the power out your mouth. See, we know that you will it. I know you are. I know that you'll stand. I believe that you will stay the course. What I then don't want you to do on your way is sabotage yourself by your mouth. See, one of the ways that we sabotage ourselves is with this thing. Always be keenly aware in this walk because you're trying to figure out why you got so far and that some stuff happened. You're trying to figure out why almost but not quite there. So I'm going to show you something and I want you to understand that in the midst of writing sometimes a line will get slid in there. It's just a song, right? It's just a song till you speak it. It's just a song until you speak it. See, the song says, Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. And this is where you get tricked up. Nobody can heal me like you can. Stop in the name of Jesus. See, you caught up in the song, right? Nobody greater. One line, whole song, all the verses, but one line says, Nobody can heal me like you can. But that's not what the words say. The word says, greater healing than Jesus can I do. It says, greater than raising the dead can I do. It says, greater than Jesus putting on an ear can I do. Greater than opening blind eyes can I do by this word by this word but the moment that I say 
Nobody can heal me. Nobody, read it, pay attention. Nobody can heal me like you can. But that ain't what he said. The songwriter said, nobody can heal me like you can. Jesus said, even greater things than these, because I'm going to the Father, shall you do in my name. See, when my grandmama called me, I need to stand. Come on, Grandma, in the name of Jesus, you're healed. I need her to be able to stand on what I believe. I need her to be able to stand. Grandmama, I can't be where you at. I'm not going to get there in time. But from this place, if you would just lay your hands on yourself and know that greater things than healing that Jesus said, I can do in his name and by his stripes, you're healed. And I believe it. I believe it. I know you're having a moment of doubt. And you're not sure if God is going to show up with the healing that you need. But he went to be with the Father. Transferred all power to your hands. And the reason that you can stand the reason that you can speak, the reason that you're going to make it is because anything that you ask in his name, he'll do. He'll do. Back to the song, the chorus. Nobody greater Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. As we get ready to go stand to your feet, come on. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Because there's nobody greater than I. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Come on, open your mouth and say, I searched all over, come on, come on. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody, couldn't find nobody. Look high and low, I look high and low, still couldn't find nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Y'all keep singing, come on, search all over, come on while I dismiss the people, come on, y'all go, come on, sing, I search stuff. Yes, couldn't find nobody. You looked high, you looked low. You still couldn't find nobody. There's nobody greater. There's nobody greater. There's nobody great. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Search all over. Yes. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Come on. 
nobody greater. Yes, Father God, in this place, glory, there's nobody greater than you, God. We searched all over, God. We couldn't find nobody. We look high, Lord. We look low. We still couldn't find nobody, God. God, we trust and believe that there's nobody greater than you. And that in your name, God, we can do even greater things. We can do greater things, God, but we'll never be greater than you. We can simply do greater things, God, on this earth, but we will never be greater than you. The enemy would try to trick us, try to convince us that because we can do great things, that we're greater than God. That ain't true. That ain't what I said. And that ain't what the word said. The word says that greater things than these can I do in your name. Because there's nobody greater. Because there's nobody greater. Greater things than you did in the time you on earth. I shall do in your name. God glory. Hallelujah in this place. As you walk your walk on this week, we pray that this message is a blessing to your life. I believe the word says, the question is, do you believe? Are you willing to speak what the word says in all situations? Are you willing to stand on what God said? Are you willing to believe that you have a purpose in this world and it doesn't necessarily have to do with the job that you're doing right now? Your first purpose is to praise Him. You were born to praise God. That's your first purpose. God gave you a talent or more than one. And you need to take that talent in the name of Jesus that God's kingdom would be glorified God is giving you the ability to heal so that he would be glorified he's giving you the ability to open blind eyes that he would be glorified he's giving you the ability to raise from the dead that he would be glorified he's giving you the ability to speak to the mountain and tell it to cast itself to see that he would be glorified. It's all so that God would get the glory. God would get the honor. God would get the praise. You have a purpose. Then God is giving you a talent or a purpose to help your brothers and sisters. Whether you be the baker or the butcher. Whether you be the doorkeeper or the tax collector, God is giving you a purpose and a vision. Speak it. Speak it. It's been a while since you spoke it. You had given up on it. You got trouble remembering it, digging to them papers where you wrote the notes. Seek God that he would bring it to your remembrance. Speak it. Speak it. Stand on God's word. It's his battle. Stand is his battle. Stand is his battle. Stand. Be willing and ready to move. Keep speaking it and keep coming. Keep speaking it and keep moving. Keep speaking it and keep standing. I believe you're willing. The word says that you can do all things. In the name of Jesus, if you believe. If you believe. If you believe. If you believe. believe. Open up your mouth wherever you are right now and declare to God, I believe. I believe I believe 
Come on, stretch your hands out to God and say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I simply Open up your mouth and say, I believe, Lord. 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 I believe. My wife can't believe for me. Minister Robinson can't believe for me. My mama can't declare I believe for me. My bishop can't declare I believe for me. It only works when I open up my own mouth and say I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe that I will challenge a musician. I believe, I believe, I want to take a moment this morning as we get ready to have our altar call. God, I, I want to thank you for Pastor Tony and Pastor Yasmin, the man and woman of this House of Judah Community Church. I want to thank you for their members as, as they've allowed us in this space and place. I want to thank Minister Robinson over here as he grows moment by moment, God, and I'm excited because I know there's going to come a time where he's a great musician world renowned. I want him to remember a brother. God down in North Carolina now there's a mighty man and woman of God. Pastor Howard Winslow. Apostle Marilyn Winslow who love me with all their heart God I ask you to bless them with a flood of overflow the likes that the state of North Carolina has never seen God that you would continue to cover and bless and keep my family come here honey God, when I come and sing and I say that you have done great things, you have done great things for me. This woman that you gave me, God, what a great thing that you have done for me. Wherever you're at, if you're listening to the broadcast, somebody passed it to you. It doesn't matter that we're not live when you see it. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is your moment. Declare that you believe. Confess your sins. Ask 
Jesus to come into your heart. Believe that he stayed the course. Every stripe was for you. He was spat on. That was for you. He stayed the course. He hung there on Calvary when he didn't have to for you. And that he rose also for you. And if you pray and you believe, salvation is yours. Eternal life, life more abundantly, is yours. If you're not in the Maryland area, we love you for watching the broadcast. We love you for sharing it with other people. But get in a place where you can fellowship. Uh, God gave you those talents. He gave you that vision that you would share, that he would be glorified. That he would be glorified. That he would be glorified. If you're in Maryland, come on by and visit with us a while. Come on, lift up your voice so I can stop singing into this microphone. Driving Minister Robinson crazy over here. My bad keys. Come on. Come and lift up your voice. Come and lift up a praise to God because... He's so worthy. He's so worthy. But we pray that this message is a blessing to your life because in a minute my wife going to poke me in the back because you're just going on now. Come on. Come on and out the field, Pastor. Come on. My old saints know what that means. Come on and out the field, Pastor. Bring it on home now. I want you to know that God loves you. No matter what it looks like around you, no matter what they say, God loves you. Come on and walk in this thing this week. And watch the manifestation of God's love show up in your life. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And we pray this message is a blessing to your life. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Father, for the word. Thank you for the word that's true. Thank you, Lord, that it's true in our lives. Not just true, Lord, it's true in our lives. I thank you, Lord God, that each of us received what it is that we were, called, what we were to receive today, Lord.